Well, I was just a teenager. I was just 13. And all I remember it was uh, Sunday afternoon. My sister and I came home from the show. They said the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor. And of course, like everybody else said, where's Pearl Harbor? Nobody even heard of it before that. And then the next morning, I went to school. The, uh, we all had a general assembly in the auditorium. And we listened to President Roosevelt's speech and where he declared war on the Japanese. We had what we called the nitwits. We knitted things. <laughs> Actually, we just knitted squares. We made Afghans. Supposedly, they were going overseas to the needy uh, war people, but I don't know where they ended up. <laughs> we sold war stamps every Friday at school, and you, they were 25 cents, and you filled a little book, and then when you got that book filled, you turned it in for a bond, and it was $18.75, $18.75, which matured into a $25 bond. And that was our big war effort, I guess. <laughs> we collected. Uh, metal and we took the tin cans and it was my job. You took the, en the ends off of them and stuck the ends in it and then you squashed them and you collected them. And uh, we saved fat for the, uh, I don't know what they did, but we sold fat. <laughs> we save it and take it to the butcher and they give us a dollar for the big can of fat. And of course there's gasoline rationing. Like we got something like three gallon a week or something if you had an A sticker. And if you just uh, pleasure uh, automobile, you just got the A sticker, unless you had a business or something that took more gasoline, then you got more gas. I mean, shoes and sugar, a lot of shortages of uh, film and soap, of all things. And nylons, of course, were impossible to get. They were making parachutes with that. And uh, when you see a line at a department store, like, say, Famous Bar, you just automatically get into it because you knew there was something at the other end that was hard to get, whether you, you know, you just didn't know what it was, but you got in these lines. Oh, and then at the end of the war, the landlady sold the house and we had to move. And this is an interesting story. Uh, there were houses were not to be had because all the fellows were coming home from service. So we moved into, my mother and dad moved into a friend's house. They had a two-story house on Hartford and rented a room upstairs and made a makeshift kitchen downstairs. And I rented a room in a friend's house in the neighborhood. And I go downtown every morning after, I was working by then, I was out of high school. And uh, I, ate breakfast. I had to eat breakfast at Miss Hullings. Well, if you've ever eaten at Miss Hullings, that's one of the nicest restaurants in the city. And then I'd come home and eat dinner with my dad and mom. And then I walked to my room where I slept. And that's the way it was. Nobody had any places to live. And then finally a flat opened up on Minnesota and we were all able to move back in together again. And I lived there until I got married, which was 1948. It was just a different world, different community.